Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. Today is an incredible day, a day to celebrate, a day to actually, in a way, we have come together just to be present and celebrate who we are. Um, as you, as me, as a we. Hello, Janelle. Hi, Ron. It's so good to be with you, isn't it? Well, today I wanted to talk to you about something that is happening um, in Armenia. Uh, after decades and decades, Armenia has now uh, elected a new prime minister. Uh, Prime Minister Nicole. And it's significant because it was a march done by thousands and thousands, hundreds and thousands of people who rose to the occasion of saying, we want change. We want something better for us. We no longer want to be under the last regime. And they all stood up together. And that energy, if you see all the pictures, all the videos that it's happening around the world, even CNN, everywhere, the world is talking about this. Not because it was a demonstration, but it was a demonstration of unity, a demonstration of saying yes to something better, something powerful, something good. And isn't that what we want in life? Believe it or not, that's everything we do in life is to come from bitterness to something better in life. And that's what we all strive for. Hi, Chris. Hi, Jack, Janelle. And it's, it's a celebration of motherland. And it's a celebration in few days of Mother's, uh, Mother's Day coming. So, but what is Mother's Day? And how do we celebrate? I like to talk about our relationships with what we call mom. What we call a mother. Is mother a nurturer? Or is mother the person who gave us birth? Is mother the homeland that we feel home and we call it our motherland where we were born or is mother the person who we were just born and we have absolutely no connection and we call the place that we live home the motherly that place that makes us feel good about who we are <sighs> and with that I want to say, hi, George. Hi, Jeff. And, and that's what this entire thing is. It's the communication. But communication also of the parent within us, the adult within us, and the child within us. So in a way, the work I do, it's not so much with my clients of coming in here and making that change, you know, that I can hypnotize you and this can happen. But the process, the process of um, acknowledging our past, evoking our history, it's acknowledging what is the issue, what is paining us or what was bitter, and then coming to accept the reality of where we are, acknowledging the present, the here and now, and then allowing ourselves and giving ourselves permission for that change to happen and bringing that entire, the parent, the adult, and the child within us and tapping into the subconscious mind, which is truly the power, the power and the hub of all that there is. Because whatever thoughts we perceive is what we conceive. Does that make sense? I mean, it's 
it's what has been instilled in us. Let me give you an example. Not too long ago, uh, a client of mine came in and uh, she came in with fear of driving on the freeway that for the past year and a half, she's not been able to drive on the freeway. So there is a block, there is a fear, and it, it's like she's frozen. She can't get on the freeway to drive even a small little distance, whereas before she could. So what do we do? First and foremost, the process is tapping within and understanding where it came from. So it the the easy part is for me to explain that we go from uh, that this preconceived notion, and for her to understand when it happened, why it happened, and had nothing to do with the freeway. So there was an emotional block within her. And my question to her was, what is the worst thing that could happen? Because you have created this fear and made it into this, in her words, this Godzilla. And I can't get on the freeway. I go into this panic and all this negative thoughts come to me. So finding what this Godzilla is. Is the Godzilla real? Well, no, she started laughing. Okay. Well, is this block a real block? Well, in her mind, in her emotions, it was. So her panic that she would get all this sweaty hands, palpitation and everything, I asked her and through guiding her, it's getting into that place that she felt quite angry at something else. You see, the process is getting you from anger to a point of this becoming unimportant, which is the boredom, from boredom to hopeful, from hopeful to the transformation. So my process was easy. Now that there is no real Godzilla, we put that aside, we come to the panic and anxiety of her body and asking that if she could only imagine in her own mind what is the worst thing that could happen if she went on to the freeway, if she drove to the freeway like she used to? And she said, I go into panic. Well, let's figure out the panic. Well, on that day, the day before, she froze and in her mind, she can't drive onto the panic. She was in a argument with her significant other. And to the point that she was so angry that the moment she sat in the car and she wanted to go to a place, she froze because of all the emotions that was all stored up in her. The moment she wanted to go onto the freeway, she had this block. It was not about the freeway. And for her to understand, this was an emotional thing. And what could be the worst thing that if she wanted to go on the freeway today? And if she were to go and drive, what would be the worst thing? And if she could figure it out, what we did is first go tap into finding her anger, finding that argument that she had, and is it real today? No, it is not. Has that been resolved? We resolved the anger issues. And then just had her imagine that if she can get on the freeway, all the places she can go to, the places that she wanted to go and save time because every time she wanted to go somewhere, it took her an extra half an hour to an hour with this traffic to get there. And she would get more upset because of being late and she had to take an extra hour in order to be where she wanted to be. So by resolving small little issues, and then saying, 
but close your eyes, just breathe into it, and just imagine as if being on the freeway with everyone else in flowing, flowing to your destination, flowing to where you want to go, and changing lanes, it's so much easier than being stuck in the traffic and making all this pre-arrangements to get where you want to go from street to street. Wouldn't that be easier? And it was yes. How about if you just imagine all that tension and worry all fading away? As if you're sitting in traffic and listening to a beautiful podcast, your music, singing along, and just taking your time and getting to your destination, even half an hour earlier, feeling so much better. Your palms are relaxed. You are relaxed. You've been singing or even listening to an ebook, audiobook. Ah. And she could imagine that, and she smiled. And since there is no real Godzilla, and since you are safe in your car, since you already know where you're going, and there is absolutely no blocks, what else is stopping you? And she could not think of something else that was stopping her at that very moment. Feeling good? feeling calm, feeling relaxed. And I said, what if you close your eyes and you give the affirmation of, I can. I can drive. I can move forward in life. I can move forward onto the freeway. I can get in and on from the off-ramp and see yourself driving onto the off-ramp, merging in with the rest of the cars onto the freeway. And they easily open space for you to merge in. And you go into the middle of the lane and you stay there. And a few exits more, you can get off and you can exit. And yet, there's only a few more exits for you to arrive to your destination. And within 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, you're still doing good, singing along. And by the time you're done, guess what? You see the sign of the exit that you're going to get off, and you easily and gently merge into the lane that you have to exit. And you're still calm, you're relaxed, you know you can do it, you're still safe on the freeway, you're still safe in your car, and you easily and gently exit. Hmm. Your body is relaxed, you are calm. There was no real Godzilla in there except the billboards, right? Now, isn't driving onto the freeway cutting time uh, short uh, and you feel safe with everyone there? And in case anything happens, if it were, everyone is there with you. They allow you to merge in and out and you exit and you go to your destination feeling proud of yourself. Your body is absolutely intact, feeling calm. There is absolutely nothing happening in the palm of your hands except your hands being on that steering wheel. And soon you know that when you are joyful, when you are relaxed, you've already let go of the anger, the numbness, you're hopeful, and you've already established what you thought was negative and your old thought pattern and the perception now be a new way of transformation. You see, what we do is create blocks and barriers for ourselves 
Things do not happen to us, but they happen for us. Hello, Joan. And it, it, it's incredible it coming from success, uh, from lack of sleep, from relationships. I mean, relationships. There is nothing more powerful than the relationship of a, um, a child and parents. And I want to bring it down and hone it down to my own. Um, you know, my mom and I have this powerful, loving, nurturing uh, relationship. It's very strong. Sometimes we even uh, have been told that we could be sisters. And yes, because we have a very strong bond. And, and yet, there's this tug of war from the time that I remember this, uh, the ego we love so much. And yet the ego of discipline and control sometimes comes in. So what is ego? Ego says you're mine. This, it's like the ownership. And it can come from a lot of love, but the love is light. The love is I nurture, I love you. And ego is mine, this is me, you belong to me, um, and, and that possession. We all have egos, but having this ego of ours, having a little bit of a checkpoint, it can do us a lot of good. Growing up, I don't know, can you relate to this or not? Mom uh, could not control me. <laughs> I was like a tomboy, a go-getter. I it, There was nothing I could not achieve. And it got to a point that because she didn't know how to control this energy of mine, there was a lot of discipline at home. And yes. I got disciplined. In the old days, discipline was spanking. Discipline was more than grounding. Nowadays, it's called abuse, but we called it discipline. And it got to a point that I'm shifting this and letting you know it became like a bullying, not bullying from mom, but myself to me. That when I was not doing things properly, I would discipline myself, right? And do this checkpoint inside or say the negative things of, I didn't do this right. I didn't do that right. That in itself was, again, not loving, but the ego, the discipline, the control. Hmm. So years later, doing my own process, this called, I've created this method that I called the three E, lovingly, is to tap within ourselves to look at this process of our behavior, of when we want something better for ourselves, healthier, loving, nurturing, success. How do we shift it? The process of 3E, which is delving and first acknowledging what is no longer working for us. Hmm? Second is acknowledging what is the reality. How is it affecting us right now? And the evolve, which is evolving to what it is we desire and what we want. So today, understanding that there is a process, a process can happen just like that, just like I helped this client of mine in one session. It took an hour and a half. I just gave you the real fast version of it. But it's an incredible, powerful way that we can help. And there are transformations. There are transformations of communication with mother, with our fathers. And um, um, and communication with loved ones. 
communication with people who matter, communication with community and the people who rejoice and come unite as one, and that becomes power. The power of a cause, the power of love, the power of saying, I love you, and the power of saying, I love you, mom, or motherland, or even our community and friends. So if I were to ask you, what is the most worthwhile thing you did today? The most powerful, loving thing that you shared or you expressed today? I want you to think back. Sit back and just come up with it. That from this very moment, what is the most loving thing you can do for yourself? What is the most loving thing you can say to you, to that inner child? Hmm? And instead of bullying yourself, become more loving. Shifting and finding this beautiful 3E process, you can do it on your own. And if you want, help i'll be more than happy to help you into that process faster and easier and effortlessly tap into your subconscious mind so we can do this but more importantly choose today that if today was your first or your last day that you were connecting with someone or making a difference in someone's life from here and then out from here and then out what's the most loving thing you would say and may that be the last word they hear from you I may not be online on He'll talk Tuesday until next Tuesday, which is past Mother's Day. And I wish every single one of you who are a mom, who are a mother that you gave birth, and the ones who are motherly and loving, caring, nurturing for someone else, because even caretakers, that's so motherly. And to all of you, all the fathers, all the men who have taken the role of caring for your loved ones, either a parent, a sibling, or even your children, kudos to you. Being a mother is being loving, nurturing caring it's the connection of warmth that when we are with that person even grandmothers and someone i have truly embraced as my second grandmother is a client of mine by the name of mora and i will post her picture here so you can see i love this woman dearly she's like a grandma to me because from the time that she came 15 years ago, every other week that she used to come for her massages, it was not about that. It was from the time that she would walk in, we would catch up on the community stuff. We would catch up on politics. We would hug for her birthday. I would give her something, Armenian gata, and... She's Irish, and she would talk about Ireland, her growing up. And uh, truly, she's embraced me like as her younger child or granddaughter. And I've taken her on after my grandma passed away as my grandma. So that's called love. That's called motherly. That's called saying, I love you. And for being here, being present, I hope this message was beneficial to you. 
And as you close your eyes, let us do affirmations. Every single day, stand up or go onto the shower. And as the water comes trickling down from the top of your head, washing, cleansing, and clearing everything, let it go all the way down, all negativity, all Godzillas created by you, for you, all blocks, all barriers. Let it wash away. Soap it. Cleanse it. Blue foot and let it go down the drain and watch it go down the drain and say these powerful messages to yourself I am healthy, I am strong, I am calm, I am worthy, I am loving, I am lovable, I am love, I am. Whatever else you want, you can fill it in. Every single day, be the success. Be the joy. Be the person that stands up for you. Because you matter. Hello, Cynthia. Hello, Ernie. Thank you for being here. I wish you all an incredible weekend. Uh, viva and Shnar Havorj, Amen Hayadin, Mer Azgin, Yev Mer Miuchuna, Mer Mayrenik, Yergidin. Tarbechun Chuni Vorme Yergidin Mechenk, Te Vorme Yergurumenk, Erer Zanve, Menk Amenes Hayek. Make ask, make lezu, make myrik. With that, God bless you all. May you have an incredible weekend celebrating Mother's Day with love. I am here for you. And with that, goodbye until next Tuesday when we come together for our next Heal Talk Tuesday. This is Lisa.